Hi there guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time. Um, today I just want to go over some new vinyl finds that I acquired during January and possibly the early part of February. Um, I've got a few other records on the way, I was hoping they were going to be here for this vinyl finds video but unfortunately they didn't get delivered in time so I suspect they'll arrive on Monday but I wanted to get this video out, I've got enough to talk about today. So without further ado let's crack on with it and the first one is by a band an experimental band called Coil. Now Coil were formed by John Balance and Peter Christofferson. John Balance, uh, ex of Psychic TV, Peter Christofferson from uh, Throbbing Gristle. They uh, joined forces to create the band Coil. It's uh, an industrial, um, I say it's industrial, it's more experimental, um, uh, uh, atmospheric type stuff, ambient um, experimental music. Um, this is a three-sided double album, the fourth side having an etch a laser etching on it. I think it's a laser etching. Um, I'll show you the jacket jacket there. There's the hype sticker if you want to have a quick look at that. This is limited, heavily limited to just 600 copies. It's on coloured vinyl. Sorry, I've left it in the shrink so it's a bit shiny. Um, I'll quickly show you the records. So they both come in a polyline dinner. This was brand new and sealed when I got it. So this is uh, side three. They all look pretty much the same. And this is side four. And if I hold it just so you can see the reflection, you can see the etching, it's... Uh, I don't know what it is actually, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's just an etching, but anyway, yeah, so obviously you can't play side four, um, sides one and two are pretty identical. What I will actually say about this is the, the coloured vinyl, the splatter on this is absolutely gorgeous, I don't know how they've done it, but it's really, really nice. And uh, yeah, uh, if you're interested in Throbbing Gristle, Psychic TV, um, that sort of thing, give it a go, Coil. Um, you can still pick these up fairly easily on uh, Discogs. It didn't really sell heavily, hence why they pressed 600 copies. Um, they're not mainstream enough, really. Uh, but it's a really nice package, really well executed. Sounds great actually as well. So uh, yeah, Coil. Uh, music to play in the dark too. I'll probably seek out the first part of this, music to play in the dark, and uh, put them together. Um, I might get some more Coil at some point. Right, so on to the next one. The next one is uh, a record which I've been after for a little while. This is a mono pressing. And this is the mono pressing of images by the Walker Brothers. Those that have visited my my channel uh, fairly regularly know that I'm a bit a uh, bit of a Walker Brothers collector at the moment. Prim primarily due to Scott Walker. Really like Scott Walker's voice and his music. Uh, it made natural sense for me to work backwards and start getting some of the Walker Brothers stuff. This was their last album, Images. Um, I think in my last Final Finals video, I showed the Portrait album, which I have got. Um, this is okay. It's not as good as Portrait, I don't think. There's some good songs on it. Um, there's only one thing wrong with this. Uh, on the side one, on the running groove, there's a slight pressing defect, and you can actually see... Uh, the, the, the needle dip a little bit and it pushes it over and you can hear it, it just jumps a little bit because of this pressing defect. Consequently, the previous owner probably um, didn't miss that bit and it's a little tiny scratch that ticks as it goes past about the first 10 seconds of track one. But um, other than that, it's in immaculate condition. Um, it will be okay until I get an upgrade copy and uh yeah the walker brothers images um i'll give it about a six out of ten 
give Paul Trait a seven or eight out of ten. A better album than this. But it was oh, it was cheap, fifteen quid. I'll add it to my collection. So uh, yeah, Walker Brothers Images. Right, the next one is a record I've actually been after for quite a while, probably about a year or so, and I've uh, at last found a copy at the right price, so I pulled the trigger on it. Um, up until now, all the copies that I've seen were in the US, so I had to pay like an uh, inflated shipping cost from the US to this country, but I found this. Um, a guy had this in, I think it was France, so I just had to pay shipping from France, which wasn't a lot of money. And that is, if you can believe your eyes and ears, the mamas and papas. This is the Sunday's repress of it. Uh, this is the original mono mix. And I'll let you see the hype sticker if I can get my hand out of the way. And stop the glare. You can have a read of that at your leisure. I've left it in the uh, shrink wrap. The actual uh, original toilet seat cover is under that sticker. That's actually on the, the cellophane on the shrink. Um, what can I say about this album? Uh, this was released in 1966. Um, California Dreaming was released by the Mamas and Papas in 65, probably late 65, I guess. Um, they wrote it in 63. Uh, John and Michelle Phillips wrote California Dreaming in 1963. They recorded a backing track for it, and the first person to record it was a guy called Barry Maguire. Um, his version is very strange, although it uses the same backing track that the Mamas and Papas used. So you've got the, the Mamas and Papas doing all the backing vocals uh, behind Barry Maguire's lead vocals. Um, there isn't a flute solo on it. I think it's a. I've not listened to it all the way through, but I've read there's a, a harmonica solo. Uh, I sort of got about a minute into the song and then took it off because I didn't like it. It was quite jarring. Um, but this, um, whoever mastered this, done an absolutely fantastic job of it. Like I say, this is the mono pressing. Um, this comes on the Dunhill, a reproduction of the Dunhill label. And uh, it, it comes in a polyline dinner. Uh, I'm not going to get it out because there's not much to see here. But um, actually, no, I'll, sh I'll show you the, uh, the rear of the jacket, I guess. Let's show you the rear of the jacket. So there's the actually actual jacket. Let's see if I can show you the toilet cover without ripping it. No, I don't want to rip it. Uh, but anyway, there's the back. And like I say, this was released in 66 and uh, released by Sundays in 2010. Um, one thing that leaps out at me with this album is it is unashamedly hippie. Um, you listen to this and you are transported back to 1967. Uh, I, this was released in 66. I think this was actually... A, it, ahead of its time slightly by about six or seven months um i think it's a great album it's a great album um they do a cover of i call your name by the beatles on this that's the only down point for me i'm not a great fan of that song um but i like the beatles version but i just don't like their version uh, but other than that the rest of the album is a is a banger and uh you know the vocals on this are uh to die for and it's and in mono sounds really really good highly recommend this uh if you can believe your eyes and ears the debut album for the mamas and uh, the papas right next one um this one is a fantastic album it needs no introduction this is the original soundtrack album to the 1971 film Shaft. This was at the height of the black exploitation thing going on in the early 70s when you had like Superfly, Shaft, uh, to name but two films from that era. Um, they used all of that funky, wah wah, jazzy, trumpets sort of thing, you know, that Curtis Mayfield sort of uh, pioneered Isaac Hayes took it as well and, and ran with it and this is a fantastic record it's a double album this cost me £15 
the records are in excellent condition and uh, there's only one slight thing on the jacket you can see there's a mark there uh, probably left from a price sticker that is ripped to the front of the cover but other than that uh, the cover is in VG to VG plus condition I'd say VG because of that mark the records are in VG plus condition I'd say not near mint uh, they need a good clean I've tried cleaning them twice but there's some ingrained dirt uh, in the uh, grooves it snap and crackle and pop it sounds like rice krispies can't get it out so I'll um, it needs to be wet cleaned properly so I'll do that at some point uh, desperately need a, a record cleaning machine to deal with things like this but yeah absolutely fantastic record um, obviously everyone knows the theme from shaft with that wah wah going all the way through it that's fantastic um, it's on the stacks label which is great this is a UK pressing by the way and um, everything on this every track on this album is is good it just takes you back to an era a point in time in that early 70s when uh, you know you had like your pimps uh, with massive moustaches and huge fur coats pimp mobiles it's just brilliant you know so uh, yeah highly recommend this if you like sort of that early 70s funk sort of stuff i could recommend this is a really good reasonably priced early 70s um funk album there you go and on to the last one now this is a bit of a punt um i've got this on the back of um a video that i saw that stephen wilson did now stephen wilson was talking on his video that when he goes out in the car with his children his family he generally tries to put something in the car that's going to keep them happy as well as himself um Obviously, he's not going to be playing Porcupine Tree and stuff like that. Um, so he tries to choose music that is sort of um, acceptable to all. And he actually pulled this out and said, really like this album. If you like sort of uh, folk, folk acoustic rock pop, you can't go wrong by getting Folklore by Taylor Swift. This is my only Taylor Swift album. I don't know if I'm going to be buying any more, but what I can say about this, let's get it out of the plastic, to quote Abigail, Abigail Devoe. Let's get it out of the plastic. Um, what I will say about this record um, is it sounds fantastic. Um, I listened to it last night for the first time, and I'm a little bit... Um, put off of new releases uh, by new artists being released on vinyl because generally speaking they're they're mastered for Spotify they're mastered for uh, streaming services and stuff like that so they compress them to make them sound big in your earphones so I, I got stung when I got the Florence and the Machine album if you how big how blue how beautiful if you look back at my last video i did on that and you all know that i um didn't like that album at all uh, i love the album don't get me wrong but i didn't like it on vinyl um it sounds awful truly awful this on the other hand sounds really 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 good this is the one with the bonus track the lakes so i think this was a, a an early um special edition i think i don't know she done about eight different versions of this a cover art uh, with her in different scenarios um but yeah um i'll just show you the vinyl so this is, comes on like a, I don't know, it's like a beigey brown vinyl, but this is, um, it's like veined, it's really uh, unusual. It looks opaque when you get up close to it, but as soon as you hold it up to the light, you can see all the veins through it. It's a lovely uh, thing. I'm not quite sure about, I like the colour, but I like the thought process that's gone into it. Um, so yeah, I can highly recommend this. It's a double album. Um, I think it's been um, recorded really well. Really, really well. Um, she obviously 
she can't do nothing wrong at the moment. Um, I'll even forgive the fact that they've used pitch correction on her voice on everything, because um, they do that nowadays, which I think is a shame, because um, apparently she's got a really good voice, but I don't think anyone's ever heard it, because when she records in the studio, they add pitch correction, they get all those, all those notes bang on the line, so what you actually hear on the end product isn't what she's saying in the studio, essentially, which is a bit fake, really, but that is the modern way. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on that, on pitch correction and uh, auto-tune. It's um, something that I'm acutely aware of, being a musician. Um, I have had my voice pitch corrected once in a recording, and I wasn't best pleased. <laughs> <laughs> it was only one section of a song, but uh, the guy that was mastering it pitch corrected it, and I said, why did you do that? And he said, because it's a tiny little bit flat. And I said, no, leave it. it was but anyway, maybe I'll do a video about that, um, because that's a whole other topic altogether. So with that ado, uh, hit like and subscribe. Do all the usual stuff. It makes my channel grow. Um, really does... Um, help me reach that target of a thousand subscribers it's creeping up creeping up creeping up um got a few ideas in the pipeline coming up so stay tuned and i'll see you in the next video cheers bye bye